thank you very much for a brilliant uh, talk today. I have learned so much, and it just adds to um, a lot of the missing, I mean, um, filled in a lot of missing gaps from my um, research. Um, we know that Lagos started off, or a co was a vassal of Benin Kingdom when um, uh, was it Ashikba was given the um, uh, mandate to to represent the Oba of Benin here. So Lagos became a vassal of Benin, and we know the Benin Empire um, extended from all the way from Onitsha to perhaps Dahomey. I mean, to believe. So what was happening in Benin all this time when the British were coming and gradually snipping away at the little at the at the kingdom because it was they were gradually eroding the power of the Benin Kingdom over time. You know, so I mean, what was happening in Benin? I mean, I, I hope you would know because being yes, from Benin. Uh, thank you so much for identifying an issue about uh, Benin expansion to imperial expansion to Lagos. Uh, there are worries, you know very well. They are said to have been uh, migrants from Ife that settled in this part of the Lagos and from there they were conquered by the Beninese. And then Benin did a war camp uh, to continue their military expansion towards the West, Daomi, etc. Uh, the British already knew that the Benin Empire actually was the key to expansion to the hinterland. And the first official visit was in 1862 by Richard Bolton. And that visit was not quite successful because he didn't have access to the other the way he wanted it. And so he returned back and wrote a book about his travels in West Africa in which he denounced Benin as land that was barbaric with human sacrifice and all of that. But of course, the traders cautioned him that Britain was still interested in Benin. And the only that the Oba Abini was very powerful, and the Oba Abini still exerted monopoly over trade. And the only excuse they could get to overrun Benin or to, 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 to invade Benin was just to sign a treaty. This didn't happen until 1892, when Gao, you know, forced a treaty on the Oba of Benin. Uh, it was the attempt that was made by uh, acting Consul Phillips to uh, enforce the terms of that treaty that actually led to the crisis between Benin and Britain. Uh, I mentioned in one of my works that uh, some European writers, even African scholars, you know, they claim that it was a peaceful mission of Consul Phillips to Benin in January 1897 that actually led to the conflict, you know, which led to the British punitive expedition. I said, no, I have found some information that Phillips himself had written to war office and the colonial office to give him permission and resources to plan an expedition against Benin. And so, before the reply came, in December of 1896, Philip, but well, that was Christmas period, so movement was delayed. Philip had planned to come to Benin in January. The time Philip was coming to Benin, uh, it's actually the period we call it Benin, the Agwe Festival. There's a big difference between Igwe, which is the Benin National Thanksgiving, and the Agwe Festival in Benin. The Agwe, it's a period of uh, national fasting and prayer in Benin. At that time, the Oba was not allowed 
to see or meet with visitors. Feeling insisted. And of course, one of the warships, you know, planned to attack the party, which led to the death of some Europeans and some African carriers. Now, immediately after that, of course, the news got to Europe and was described as the Benin massacre of January 1896. Now, the British, they were aware that Benin was a powerful empire with a strong military system and so did not take chances. What they did was to organize a multinational force. The commander of the Royal Navy from Cape Town, Rear Admiral Ross, was the commander of the expedition. Now, Britain also recruited soldiers from the Mediterranean squadron, from Sierra Leone, from the West Indies, from Britain itself, including the elite force, you know, to plan a strategic attack on Benin. And Britain also carefully planned the attack in such a way that it was three pronged from Uwatong to Benin, the other one from Olubu, the other one from Sapulet. Of course, once the invasion started in February 27, uh, Benin did not anticipate that kind of strategic preparations or British way of warfare, you know, and resistance did not last long and Benin collapsed. Uh, in February. Now, unfortunately for Benin, uh, means of communication were very poor. Most of the Benin settlers, right from Benin land to Akure, to Ekiti, to Ijewu, to Lagos, did not have the means of communication to inform the other, for example, from Lagos. Now, this particular local government called Etiosa. Etiosa is uh, well, basically Benin settlers that were here. And they didn't have the communication system, you know, to get back to the other that look, this area that we now call our war camp had been taken over by the British. And so and to travel from Benin to Lagos at that time, it took roughly eight to ten days by waterways. And those who moved by foot. You know, they didn't go straight. They had to go to Ife. From Ife, they had to relocate somewhere to move towards the Jebode. From there, they moved towards uh, Ikorodu. And that was how they entered uh, Lagos. That was the kind of movement. So this was difficult for the other. You know, to totally understand that times have changed. That the British were already uh, moving, you know, in, in, you know, making some incursions into the hinterland, and therefore could not prepare early enough to resist the British. Uh, unfortunately, because by 1897, uh, Benin fell, uh, it would be difficult uh, for most West African states uh, to have resisted uh, the British superior military technology and sophistication of their military systems, you know, overpowered uh, local resistance to colonial invasion. Thank you so much. Thank you.